Hey everybody, so at this time it's Rose Quartz's turn and it's going to be the last Steven Universe character that I'm going to draw for my tutorial show, at least for a long time. But don't get me wrong, I really really enjoyed drawing these characters and Rose is definitely the one that is the most fun for me to draw and you're going to see why. So yeah, let's get right to it. Alright, at first we are going to start with a circle as often, just a simple circle and of course also the center lines and her face is going to face upwards while she looks downwards, but just slightly, just like that for example, okay? And we're starting with the nose right where the middle is and here these two lines for the nostrils simple as that. Now the eyes are very different from most of the other characters. Most of the other characters have these big oval shapes but she has just these two lines, these two curves that have a wide gap in between and they are definitely the most anime like eyes. Like her face looks really anime like. Um, not too much, it's just those two li uh, lines of the huge gap, but still. Um, it's very hard to get it completely right, because they're very different again, from scene to scene. And sometimes they're bigger, sometimes they're smaller. What I can tell you is that they shouldn't be too curved, they shouldn't be like that. But also not like that, obviously. Just a slight curvature is enough. And now, as I said, she's going to look downwards to something. Also, we should not forget here a little reflection in her eyes, a little highlight, like that. Which makes it look even more anime-like, but that's alright. Maybe also make it here a bit steeper, small correction, alright? Because of perspective, pretty much. Now. We are continuing with the mouth. At first we have this curve here for the upper lip. Now the mouth itself, the expression that I want to give her is like, Ooh, like wow, surprised. Like what is this thing that she is seeing? Wow. Now I'm not saying what it is. You can make up your own story. But she definitely looks very surprised. So for your teeth, you just draw this very simple curve here, then this small line here to indicate the tongue. It's the back side of her mouth. Alright, it's as simple as that. And also we should not forget the lower lip right here. Now the lip, uh, the lower lip can even go over the line of the chin depending on the perspective. In this case it's not the case, but just saying. Now, we are also drawing the lipstick, which is this round curve here that is almost touching the line for the lips, but not completely. Then I'm filling it out like this, and normally you have a little highlight right at the lower lip. So maybe like here there would be a highlight. I just do it a very sloppy one just to give you the idea of where it should be. Okay, so this would be the lipstick too. Now, she also has eyebrows, but they are mostly hidden behind the hair of course and the eyebrows are pointing up like this of course because she's very surprised like that. Now to draw the hair, at first we're going to focus on the front part that is in front of her face and the back part, the really big part with the locks and stuff will be the last part because it's the most at the background. Now we are starting here at her right side and there she's going to have the split of her hair. And on this side here we are curving it around all the way around until we are getting back here and we are about the same height as the bottom of the nose. Then we draw this spike here and then go all the way around again. It's quite some curvature. It's very curvy, like so, alright? 
and you can add more spikes here and there if you want to add more details it's up to you now here we you can either just draw these three curves like so you can also give it more detail by drawing the individual hairs like that it's again up to you and here we are doing the same thing like on this side here we are curving it around but since we have this perspective it's not that big of a curve and then going back like this something like that all right so also we have to give the chin a bit more definition now her face is not completely round yeah. now here at this side it's hidden behind the hair so you cannot really see it but normally you would her face would have this kind of form yeah but here down here we have the chin and it's a bit um, edgier than just this roundness so we give her kind of like a corner very very soft corner right here maybe we leave a bit more space so like this maybe for example all right okay so also i'm closing here i'm eliminating a bit more space over here because it's a bit too much all right so now as for her body we are drawing the neck of course and it's going back a little bit because i want to emphasize her surprise like she's thrown to the back of how, uh, how surprised she is and here we have the line for the shoulders and it is wider than the head itself like about twice as wide something like that it's pretty much this almost straight curve all right then we are starting on this side here this time we are drawing it first in this direction this little curve here for the shoulder and then to the other side and i'm going very much like this direction i'm not going straight down like this but i want her chest to reach out because she is uh thrown back like this and so wow the the chest should be more the foreground so yeah we have here the bottom now this is where the waist would be and it is of course shorter than this line here and now we draw slightly upwards about as wide as here and this is where the breasts start we are just drawing this half circle pretty much hey there yeah you're in the way so here it is half circle and we are like we can also help us out by drawing the center line for the chest and we draw the top of the dress first we're curving it down until we get to the center line and then curve it around again we are drawing the circle shape and then go all the way around here for the shoulder like so this is how you do it. you can do it you can add more detail to the breasts if you so desire it is up to you so and of course we are connecting this line here so all right now we are continuing with the dress we take four times the size of the head one two three four it doesn't have to be super exact just an estimation and this would be the size of the dress now here at the back we want to have quite a steep corner like this to uh, give you the roundness of her bottom and on the other side it is not as steep it goes more just downwards like so and then we simply let the dress fall like that all right then at the point where we almost at the height of the last mark that we did we are curving around and we can keep it very simple we don't have to like do all sorts of complicated um, folds and stuff 
but you can just keep it like that, alright? Now, the dress is parted into four parts, basically. And to help us out, we are drawing, like here would be maybe the center line, so next to it, more on the left side, we have here a little guideline. I mean, not little, a long guideline. And we are using it to determine where the pattern is starting from. So, we are separating it into four parts. And it's always falling down from this guideline here. One, two, and three. So, like that. And on the other side, two. Just like that. Like it's falling down. Alright, and you can also add a bit more detail by like letting it point out a bit more. You can draw it just flatly, but you can also add this extra detail, and I personally like to do that. It looks very pretty. So, okay. So this would be the dress. Also, not that complicated. I was definitely very intimidated when I started to do the research and tried to draw her because of all the details that she has, but I tell you, it is not that complicated and it is a lot of fun because a lot is pretty much left up to you how you draw parts of her design. It's not uh, like most of the, char yeah, the characters that I drew of Steven Universe, the, their designs aren't that as strict. You can still be very free with it, and they look very different from scene to scene after all. But there is even more freedom with her design, especially for her hair, because it's very wild, and I personally like it a lot. So now I'm drawing this star-shaped hole that she has, where she has her belly button, uh, this hole in her dress, and I do it like I explained also in some of my other Steven Universe character tutorials, where at first I draw this kind of flower shape, which helps me a lot to get the star shape correct, because I'm not very good at drawing stars, I have to admit. Now in the middle we have of course the gem, so at first a circle, a bit bullshit because of the perspective, and now I draw these lines here from the, like you can imagine a line coming from the spikes, the tips of this uh, star, and then just a small line from the circle. And I keep these lines on this side here shorter than on this side because of the perspective again. And then I simply connect it like so. Simple as that. Now what we should not forget are the locks that she has on her shoulders. I often forget them for some reason, but they are very important for a design. And at first what I'm doing to draw the locks, and this is a good way to explain in general how to draw them, because she has a lot of them, is at first I'm starting with the end. Uh, the locks look very tubular, so we have this opening here, and then you simply draw the tube shape, but tube shape is not like this, alright? It's not just straight. It is more, how to say, more bulgy, more fat, more irregular, something like that. And it curves around all the way and is like unpredictable. And also you should not, of course, draw it like this. This would also be wrong. So if then you go more outwards instead of inwards, all right? So something like that. So you give her a lot of this curvature here and then always you have this kind of extra spiral that comes off uh, to emphasize that it's a lock and not just a tube of some sorts. And what you can do is you at first start almost at the end here, draw the line until you get to this point here and continue like so and then use this line here, you curve around more than originally, then connect it as such. What you can also do is add more three-dimensionality even, and 
at first connect it with the line that we already had and then make a line here so it continues from the background it curves around like that so this would be an easy way to draw this kind of spiral that she has now we want to emphasize more the tube shape and give it more three-dimensionality so we add more of these kind of curves here inside there should definitely be here some curves um, here where we are looking inside the tube is pretty much and then also here out here here and there just a few of these curves that follow the curvature of this uh, tube shape and we do the same thing over here too it's more like this also I want to draw it in a way like the the hair is flying around like she's thrown back and so these locks fly off like that to emphasize the surprise even more like wow she's thrown away oh my gosh so something like that then like this connect it like here so okay make it a bit thicker to make it point out a bit more because it's hard to see right now let me curve it a bit more like so all right then inside we have these lines again and here too to emphasize the shape of these locks okay so this is how you draw those so these would be the two that she always has on her shoulders now we are continuing now with the arms i'm switching colors for that to distinguish the, uh, it from the rest now the first one i'm going to have her like this Ooh. and i'm starting simply with the base of her hand and then simply a very simplified box-like shape for the hand and for the fingers something like that like this actually okay and then separate it into equal parts right and then connect it simply with the arms with the shoulder like that so here she would have the upper arm then you simply have to connect it like so all right something like that now considering this kind of position you should not like you can only bend your hand and your fingers so much backwards like normally you are not perfectly perpendicular but you're pointing a bit more forward so you have to consider that too in order to make it somewhat believable uh, looking somewhat believable so something like that okay so we have here the first arm with the first hand i'm not giving it too much of extra detail like it's just arms um and the arm shape uh, the hand shape is pretty much like steven universes the fingers are quite short and I'm going to add the second arm down here and it's also very simple first we have the upper arm and inwards just a little bit make sure that you make very big ovals very wide ovals because she has some whiteness to her after all. Alright. <clears throat> and then here you have the base of the hand. We are curving it slightly. Always give the fingers a slight curvature in order to make them look a bit better. If they're just straight then it looks weird kinda. Something like that. 
to indicate the farm here a bit. So, okay. Alright. And then separate it into equal parts for the fingers. Okay. Alright. I'm actually going to cheat a little bit and make this hand a bit bigger because it is it is bugging me a little bit. So, alright. This is the magic of the digital drawing tools. Sorry for that, but it's done very quickly. Okay, now we're finally going to draw the rest of her hair. And at first I'm going to draw a guideline. We're taking a bit less of the size of the head, making a small mark up here. So she has quite some volume in her hair. And now I'm going to draw this kind of an oval shape, this egg-like shape, giving her a lot of volume, especially back here. And in this shape here will be most of her hair. It, what I found out is that it's mostly following this kind of shape. Her, her hair. It's it's very dif uh, difficult to say how exactly you have to draw it because there is no exact way. So yeah, but this uh, is a helpful guideline I have to say. And it's about this length too. And if you follow that then you get it, get it somewhat correct. Okay, so we are now drawing some details. At first we are starting up here and draw a big curve right on the top, right here, a very big curve. Then we go downwards like this and these two curves here at the side are a bit smaller than this top curve here. They go quite down, they are not as horizontal as this one here at the top. All right, and now basically you can construct her hair however you want to. We have um, basically three different kinds of elements. You have these curves here, so just like that. Then you have these spikes, you can add them too. And then you have these locks that you can also add at the, any place you want. You should not overdo it with these elements, but you also should not underdo it. That's a word. So yeah, um, we're starting here at the front, uh, at the back. A little spike here maybe. Then I'm going to add here a lock. Let's say right here. And this one, you also what you should consider is that you should draw the locks in all sorts of directions. It shouldn't be all of them. Uh, at the same, in the same way all of them like going to the back and here like this, this would look um, very boring. But as I said, her hairstyle is very wild and it would emphasize this wildness to her hair. Okay, then maybe here. Also, you can not only shoot a point into different directions also you have to like not only in two dimensions but also in three dimensions and so some of them are looking back some of them are looking forward so this one here is looking slightly backwards actually and this one is looking slightly forward so something like that so just play around and try around however it when it looks good then it's totally fine that's basically the rule that you have to follow uh, with the small extra rules that I just gave you but they aren't that yeah what is it oh you you oh you 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 oh my <laughs> so these lines here and here too and extra lines here and there now well, this would be behind the arm so not necessary and as, as I said, you should not overdo it. When you do one uh, one after another next to each other, then 
it gets kinda too much. So avoid doing that. So then one going like this here, in this direction, mm, something like that. And you can see I'm going over this uh, guideline and sometimes I'm not exactly following it, but it gives you more or less the idea where in which vicinity the hair should be. Alright, now I'm going to make this spirals again and also these spirals can look very different from lock to lock it doesn't have to be always the same way you draw them there are many different ways you know then here maybe just looking out just a little bit another another lock like that then here especially at the bottom you have simply these spikes Alright, maybe another one here. So, okay, we can. I could also add one here if I want to. If it looks good, then why not? Oops, I deleted this one. Yeah. So, <clears throat> the other side, pretty much the same. And because, like, I want to emphasize her surprise and her locks flying around and I can do that at this side much better so I'm curving it like going upwards slightly like so I really have to say she is the character that is the most fun for me to draw although as I said in the beginning I was quite in, uh, intimidated to draw her because you see there are a lot of details in her design makes it so much more special, so much more fun actually. I really love it. Her design is really great. So yeah, I would love to see much more of her in the show too. So I'm almost done, there is not that much left. I of course want to make sure that it looks good. So I cannot just do it completely randomly. So let's see, something like that would be alright, I feel. Just looking around like this here. Alright, maybe here a little spike. I still haven't found a better way, uh, a better word than spike. I'm seeing spike so often. But yeah, if, if you know a better word then please tell me. But yeah. My English vocabulary is not that, not that great, as you can probably tell. Okay, so this would be, I would say, basically her hair, and so basically how you draw rose quartz, rose quartz universe. Now I'm going to fast forward to do the outlining and the coloring and we'll do a second drawing in a different position and also together with her sword and shield to give you a different kind of look and to show you that you can do so much more with the techniques that I just showed you for drawing rose quartz. And while I'm doing that I will tell you something about the quartz crystal and the different versions of quartz crystals. Quartz is basically a crystal made of silicon and oxygen atoms, silicon dioxide. Now there are all sorts of different kinds of quartz crystals and I'm going to explain you very shortly where they get their colors and their textures from. Amethyst for example got its color from being exposed to gamma rays from radioactive sources and also has iron in its crystal lattice. It normally occurs in volcanic, igneous and metamorphic rocks. Rose Quartz, and now there we have her, normally does not form crystals, so that's very different, and got its color from titanium dioxide, and also got exposed to irradiation. It normally occurs in so-called pegmatites, which form during the final stage of magma's crystallization. Jasper is very opaque and normally has a banded or very patchy kind of texture, and you can find large amounts of iron embedded in it. 
You can normally find them in veins and cracks of volcanic rocks. Agates are banded, and you can find them in any sort of color. Uh, the most common ones in descending order are gray, white, brown, salmon, red, orange, black, yellow, violet, green, and blue. Now, the colors are normally caused by various embedded minerals, and iron oxides and hydroxides are the most common ones. But because they are porous, you can also dye them. They normally fill out cavities in volcanic rocks. And the last one, which also appeared in the show so far, is smoky quartz. Its color is caused by irradiation and traces of aluminium. I found it very interesting to learn, in context of the show and its story, that all of these minerals, all of these crystals, are actually quartz crystals. So, I found that pretty cool. Now I'm done with the drawings, and I did the second drawing in a more of a heroic pose, as you can see, and gave her her sword and shield. Now the question for this time's Q&A section is, where is your favorite place to draw? Now the answer is pretty boring, I just like drawing at home the most. Because I have my cats here, it is nice and cozy, I can leave some funny or interesting show running in the background, I can do breaks in between and while I do these breaks I play some games or watch something else or read something. I also like to draw outside of course in some nice park close by or something. But not for that long. I'm thinking about getting an all year ticket for the zoo here in Vienna so I can simply hang out with the animals and sit next to them while I'm drawing so that would be also pretty cool. The only problem is, first of all it costs a little bit, and second of all the zoo is not that close to me, so it takes a while always to get there. But well, if you have a question for me, then just let me know in the comment section, and I will gladly answer yours. And if you want to help me keep this show running, then you can also check out my Patreon page, and I would highly appreciate that. Alright then, have fun drawing! Yeah. <laughs>